So we're now going to look at techniques for playing your perfect fifth healing tune pipes. Now, you will have one or two of these mallets. I believe you're going to be getting two of them. And uh, if you don't get two with the two boxes, then what you will have is one of these with a set of tuning forks probably. So you can work with one mallet, or if you happen to have two, you could even work with two. So when you're tapping them, the best place to tap is in the top section before the hole where the string is. That's the prime zone. When tapping, you'll probably find it easier to tap with a sort of a, a downward motion rather than going across, because you'll probably find quite rapidly it's very easy to hit the wooden side or the other, the other pipes when you're tapping that way. So it's more of a downward tap. And then letting the sound ring on. I'm going to tap on this side, just because it's easier for you to see. And it is fine to play on either side. You can play them while standing, you can sit, and you can kneel. So I could equally, if I wanted to, kneel down and play these pipes. To maximize the effect of the perfect fifth, the best way of doing that is to work with the pairs that create the perfect fifth. So to begin with, starting with your lowest note, which is the F2, in this case that one's on my right here, going to tap that one and then tap the next note down. And you can do this either sequentially with a gap or very, very close together. So I'll demonstrate both. Or you can tap that with more of a gap. So ideally you're playing this to create a feeling of deep relaxation. So at least for the first time through, I suggest that you play starting with the lowest note, working your way up to the highest note. It's almost like a sense of coming from your root chakra up to the crown as the notes lift. Once you've done that first run through, then if you want to be a bit creative and work with different pairs, in different sequences and that's absolutely fine but it would be a good idea just to have that run through from low to high so I'm just going to do that now I find that quite relaxing doing that alone. 
what you will find is where you tap, how hard you tap will all slightly alter the sound that you're hearing. So you'll need to experiment a little bit to get the, what you feel is the right amount of pressure. If you hit too hard, the whole th they will fly around a bit and you need to get them, if they are moving, moving away from you, not sideways, otherwise they're going to clang against each other. You can use different kinds of mallet as well, which can get different sounds. Some will actually bring out the higher overtones a little bit more and some you'll hear more of the lower note. So we've got a, a kind of beater here, which um, I think this one was used mostly for Tibetan singing bowls. And I know some of you will also have different singing bowl mallets or possibly gong mallets, and both of which can be used on these pipes. So I'm just going to demonstrate the different sound you can get with two different sorts of beta. So first of all, we have the rubber ball mallet. And there you'll probably hear more of the, the slightly higher tone. You can hear, or I can hear a, a, the low hum underneath that as well. So you can hear a clear difference with using a different mallet. This is a little bit softer than the rubber ball mallet, so it does bring out the lower tones a bit more. So it's really worth experimenting with different mallets with this kit. And I also have, this is a gong mallet. So this is probably going to be softer again. So again, I can play this so you can hear again the difference Again, this one's softer again. What I'm noticing here is the low hum. I can really hear that now throbbing more in the background. So again, that brings out more of the lower tone. So I say it's really worthwhile having a play about with whatever mallets you've got available just to see what different qualities of sound you can get with this.